Welcome back to Lunatia's Vale, where we have a snow-covered mountain. Snow covered mountain, and there's only one way to get down it. This is probably gonna this is a level that's probably gonna be a rude awakening to a lot of people who thought who thought maybe thought after the jungle slider that thought after the jungle slider that the hoverboard levels were going to be a bit of a a bit of a respite from the regular levels, when in fact they're pretty much just... This one in particular is pretty damn hard. Like someone said in the thread um, when I posted the background track for this level, Stepping Wind, I posted it after the last update because I couldn't remember what level it was from and it sounded way too cool to be a regular level track. I said once you've tried to get 150 gems in this level, this song will be stuck in your head forever. I personally can't see the bad point of that, but... As you can see, getting 150 gems in this level is an exercise in absolute precision. Especially in this tube. This is the only time in the level the tube shows up, so... It's a cool one-time thing. It's also a small issue of getting all the Momet doll pieces. Because some of them are not easy. Even to find in a level that's effectively on rails. And I screw up that jump. It's close enough to the checkpoint though. Yeah, that jump there is the only time I think you first need the flutter jump to actually get over a gap. Which can make those, those are a bit deceptive really. This level demands a lot more precision. And even, and even going as fast as possible will lose you gems in a lot of areas. And you can see on this section, jumping from... As you can tell, it's an outright wild mountain rather than a pre-built course. And that is nasty. There's a moment doll piece just above just above that gap that we use the that we use the enemy to get to. Also remember this was my sec this is my second run of this course. Because my first run got screwed up by bad audio in the recording. So ev whenever I miss something, that's me missing it not once but twice. I know it's coming and I still miss it. Precision in this level is a pretty tough thing to get. I 
only just managed to keep up that. There's another moment, dog piece. Now this section is where a lot of the issues in getting 150 gems will come in. You may have noticed the uh, mirror spirit on the other side of the track there. And that's the end of the level. Shadowing there. So, welcome to the Maze of Memories. You may notice that these are vision reprises, and that's because I screwed up my saving. That's why you're not going to see any uh, Momet doll pieces in this level, because I've already got them all. I will be able to point out where they are, though. But the first one in the level should be up here. This level is actually very easy to get the 150 gems in. They're not, there are none. There are plenty hidden in little out of the way places. But they're never huge issues. Provided you're thorough in looking around the level, you're not going to have any trouble. I get the feeling this is a level that has some unpleasant memories for a lot of people. Because, after all, it's a maze, and mazes in video games, yeah. But really, like, as with as with the gems and the moment door pieces, provided you're thorough, you're not going to miss anything. And it's not that difficult to find your way to the exit. There are some tough puzzles, though. This level is very much puzzle based. Starting with this little airlock here. And that's a one way thing. Once you've gone through that, you can't get back to the first part of the level. Because you can't get to the switch needed to change things back around. There's another Momodor piece up there. And. A gold heart for reasons that will become obvious in a second. Basically, anytime you see a conspicuous little gap, it might just assume there was a moment door piece there. Like behind that giant spiker up there. This, I think, is why the gold heart's there. 
because pretty much the only way to get par back past these guys is to take two hits from them. And that makes the rest of the level kind of treacherous. Because suddenly you become very paranoid about being hit. Because the checkpoints in this game, in this level, are very spread out. This mirror may look like a dead end, but there's a hidden, there's a hidden Poco egg, just b just before it, which will pop into view if you jump up just in front of the mirror. There are a lot of mirrors in this level. They actually lend themselves to some pretty cool visual effects. This is probably one of the easiest mirror spirits in the game. Just grab it, grab those, easy 18 gems. That's the only reason to come down here. I have no idea why that whirlwind booster is there. It serves no real purpose, other than to push you over closer to the mirror. And that door leads us out there. So that whole section is a full, a full simple loop. And to get into that door up there, we have to do something we haven't actually done before. And let's use ourselves as a missile. When Klino is electrified from those guys, he can destroy enemies as he goes up. This is something I think you're supposed to learn in one of the Volk levels. And again, there's a Poco egg in the middle there. laughter. Yeah, that's something I think you were supposed to learn in one of the Volk levels, but when you're doing that it's very possible to go up the side, it's very possible and indeed in your instincts as a gamer to go up the side and try to avoid the huge cluster of flying moves the first time you encounter one of those uh, boosting enemies. This whole, this little puzzle, it's not, it's not terribly complicated, but I like it. It's somewhat satisfying. First, we need the boomy, because in all these puzzles, it's worth remembering the, the one thing that makes the boomies unique among enemies, which is that they can be moved to other areas, which makes it possible to grab this guy and run out of time. You don't have to take the boomy to another area though. Don't have to, but it's pretty much the way I always do it. Perfectly possible to just toss him there. When you look at the layout of this whole circular section though. It can be very easy to just assume you need to have the boomy a little closer to the crystal. Why don't we come on to this little weird area? There are a lot of things that need doing up here. And there are a lot of gems around. something like 20, 25 gems just in this one area alone. But it's not difficult figuring out how to get to them all. The same process works on both sides. Because the two sides are functionally identical. use 
use. Use the lightning boost to grab those other five. Getting the gems is really just the hardest part of this section, whole section. Because once you've got those, it's just a case of hopping down and going to the door. Those of you who have been with this LP from the start might remember a little platforming challenge in Door to Phantom Isle, where we had to climb up a giant stack of things using flying moose. And it was horrible. Well, this is it again. A giant, giant tower that we have to climb up using these flying moves. It's a much better set piece though, because a lot of the platforms are stationary, unlike the one at the end of Daughter Phantom Isle where we were just jumping from moving platform to moving platform margins for error were so unbelievably fine that it ended up being just more frustrating than fun. This one though, they break up the flying moves with these grab points. I mean, you with the grab points, you're pretty much at the top. And I like this tunnel. It reminds me of kaleidoscopes. And I played with kaleidoscopes a lot as I was, when I was a kid. It may look like it's taking you to towards a cutscene, but it's really just taking you towards this next section of the level. Which is tricky. So welcome to this section. Stepping on this button in the middle will rotate the platform, rotate the path. And these doors each contain the item found above them. So this door contains a boomy. We then need to take the boomy, not to that area. take the boomy over here where we can use it to bust this rock then we need to grab this guy and take him over to break the boxes in front of the crystal smasher and get 10 gems for our trouble the instinct here would be to grab the crystal smasher first, assuming that you could just get to the enemies anyway. But it doesn't work like that. You actually have to first bring the boomy to the crystal smasher. Because you can't get up those grab points while holding while holding this guy. So you have to bring the boomy to him. And remember to wait for it to and to remember to wait for it to return to you before walking through the door. And we toss it at that guy. And it turns blue. And now we can go and smash that crystal in front of the exit door. And that'll do it. Not
Fulo di ora, abdunnada, patuiona da filo di elna. Farav, lenda, lenda alud, mas elna das. See you next time.